Go ahead. It's fine. Hello? Hey. You're fine. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the other way. I guess. She's so afraid. She's just an email to them back to back to. <clears throat> okay, follow up. Thank you. You're not cold, are you? Freezing. Okay. The other people are hot. It's hot. It's, 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 it's definitely hot. It's crazy. Definitely hot. Huh? Oh yeah. All right, are we ready? I'm sorry. And welcome to the program. It's another edition of Behind the Law right here on our favorite rock radio. You know, screw it, Mick. Our favorite radio station in general. Bud 94 1. Listen to us every single weeknight right here. 8 o'clock p.m. Watch the TV show this Sunday and every Sunday, TV 27 at 10 a.m. And always follow at Behind the Law Radio on Facebook and Instagram. You can interact with us about 4 o'clock every single weekday. Ask us any question that you want right there as well. The beautiful Brianna is behind the scenes. She will write down your questions. We'll answer them right here. On the air, directly to my left, my good friend with a computer today is Allie Mack. Hi, Allie Mack. How are you? I'm ready for you, Justin. So what's this deal? What's the deal with the computer? You're going to try to be a little more interactive? Well, I want to see what, you know, I want to talk about the trending topics and and all that. So something that... uh, I'm not mad at you. I was just wondering what was up with the laptop. If you really want to know. Okay. No problem. Certain dog foods. <laughs> yeah, I've already well, heard thank that you, Mick. <laughs> I've already heard that story eight times so far today. <laughs> I'm a dog lover. I know there's a lot of dog lovers out there. To her left, it's the face of Bud ninety four one and Orlando radio legend Mick Dolan. Mick, what's up? How are you? Well, I'm just glad that since my face is the face, that this is radio. I know. Well, that's why they didn't have you on TV, buddy. That's why you're a radio star. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know my limits. <laughs> right? Three two one two eight two one zero five five. We're going to take you through the news of the day. Then we have a special guest coming in a little bit later. His name is Dallas Lehman from You Have Mortgage. So if you're in the market for a new home or maybe your rate's a little bit too high and you're thinking about refinancing or purchasing, you're going to want to stick around for this show because we're going to really go in deep detail about what's really going on in the mortgage world right now. It's good to see you guys. I'm a little tired. You look tired, Mick. What's up? Uh, you good? I, yeah, I'm good. I didn't catch any grief last night about the Christmas lights. No one said a word to me. You know how I was saying the, uh, we, I'm really upset at my household for doing the disco-looking Christmas lights? But the Christmas lights were on when you got home, Oh, right? you bet your ass they were on. <laughs> I, I, I could barely They're see. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even see to put the key in the door to get in the house because it was so bright. the Christmas lights. It was terrible. Wow. But I, as I walked in, I was like, here we go. I'm going to get yelled at about this Christmas light thing, but no, no one said a word to Do me. Do you guys have one of those doorbells that when you when you uh, ring it, it's like the, the chiming bells of a church or anything like that? No, I don't no. think so. Oh, that's next. No, no. I just I gave somebody an idea. Yeah, I don't think that we do. But then, so when I got home... <laughs> Here's what, and here's another way you can listen to Bud 94.1. So we have Alexa, right? Yep. So I just go in and I say, because I wanted to hear the show that we did with Dr. Joel Hunter. And I got home right at 8 and I said, hey, Alexa, turn it to Bud 94.1. You know what it did? What? Turned it right to Bud 94.1. Boom. There we were. There was behind the law so right you there. you enabled the skill. Yeah. I mean, it was real simple. Way more easy than you would think. I just said, turn on behind the law or turn on Bud 94.1. So one. Well, wait a minute. You didn't go through any of the steps? I didn't have to do anything. And then oh, I, it was too cool. low. And I said, Alexa, turn it up. And it went up. You and must then, have a smart Alexa. I don't know. She seemed fine to me. You yeah, it was her. not a big deal. It was easier than I thought. But then, you know, you think that maybe when you have a daughter, they're going to be like, wow, my dad's on the radio and kind of be impressed. Like, oh, daddy, is that you? She could care oh, less. Oh, she could, could absolutely care less. It was unbelievable. She actually went next to Alexa and turned on one of her YouTube videos as loud as she could. She's like, daddy, this is boring. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, but this is not a joke. This is not Radio Show Fighter. This is exactly what happened. In fact, her mother had to say, Sophia, turn that down. And she was like, Mom, this is boring. Aww. Mick yeah. Dolan, we got the cruise coming up. You got to tell us about this cruise one what, more time. What do you need to know? I want to know Old when it Saint is, Mick. what's it called, how do I sign up? It's the Old St. Mick Cruise. You can sign up at bud941.com. And, and it is free, but you do need to sign up because I, I, they, were, they told me today that more than 600 people have already Really? Gotten on board. What? Yeah. Wow. It's a big nice. boat. All right. Have you guys already posted it, or do you have a flyer? Uh, yeah. I was I'm, sh- to... I'm sure there was one. Yeah. Okay. Because I had some people ask me. Yeah. Okay. I had well, my sister are, ask me. What are they asking you? <laughs> oh, and when is it? You yeah. know, the, if it's I want to go. It's December 15th. 
one week from Saturday. We uh, leave. Well, you're supposed to board at, at 10. It's just a day cruise. What time does it come back? Uh, whenever we feel like it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, we're ready. Whenever we're this drunk enough, <laughs> <laughs> we're coming back. We're going to Cuba. <laughs> oh, you can gamble. Great. You can drink. Uh, yeah. You know, smoke a cigar. Uh, and there's live music. The, it's geez. a good time. Yeah, I can't wait. The beautiful Brianna is here. Hi, Brianna. How are you? She waved. She said hello. That's her way of saying hi to you as well. <laughs> What's up, Brianna? You good? Yeah. All right, she's fine. She's, she's in a good got mood that today. Miss America wave. So what, what's up with this off? So, look, if you've been listening for a while, you probably know that we do this program in my law firm, right? So, look, I'm a working attorney too, not just like I'm doing the radio. I don't have a lot of time to go to the studio every single day. So, we do it in my law firm. I swear, Mick, you walk in one office and it's 22 degrees. You go to the next office, it's 92. Like, can't we that? fix this? Why? I mean, can I withhold rent no. or something for that? Are there separate it's thermostats cold. at each I room? know. It's like one thermostat that I don't even think we can control. Brianna, like, what? how cold is it back there where you are? It's freezing over it's where you stupid. are. 14 degrees. Yeah, 14 <laughs> degrees back there. She's Icicles. getting snow back there. Yeah. Icicles it's off her, her nose and ears. Yeah. It's ridiculous, I think. But it was really cold. I mean, the weather's getting chilly. This morning, my house was 68. Which oh, is please. far too cold for you. Oh, yeah. it's freezing. 68 is perfect. Mm -hmm. Put on she, a blanket. She has the boot. heat on at 78. No, not 78. <laughs> 70, 73, 74. 73, 74. Oh, man. Yeah. I, can't get, I can't let my body get colder than that. We just I can't do that. That's right. So I loved your post <laughs> earlier, Allie Mack, today. Allie Mack of Allie Mack Consulting, social media wizard, as you uh, right? Wizard? Genius? What would you call yourself? Maven. Um, Maven. I like that one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that one, too. Social media whiz. Whiz kid. I like that. All right. Whatever it is, Allie Mac Consulting, all your social media needs. <laughs> if you're a business owner, you want to give her a call, please, because she can help change your business for the better. Get the customers in the door. Uh, call Allie Mac Consulting at? 407-242-2626. But, you know, you also post for yourself as well. One of the things you posted mm -hmm. today, I liked. You know, you, I'm sort of the bah humbug guy. It seems like you guys make me out to be anyway. Florida Christmas spirit. What did you What did you say about that? I was very saddened by the news this morning, um, and I can't find the post. But they're we're, ranking we're, us yeah. the forty eighth, one of the forty eighth states that has no Christmas spirit. Really? Floridians, we're we don't have bottom, any Christmas spirit. Bottom mm -hmm. of the list. I would like to see forty nine or fifty other warm weather Hawaii, states. No, probably Hawaii, I think it's Hawaii, and, and Alaska. 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 Yeah, yeah. I bet it feels Christmassy up there oh, most yeah. of the year. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't uh, mind no, that. I'm Look, trying to, it's I'm, it's warm here. It, it is a little different, you know. But I can still get in the Christmas spirit. Up and down, uh, up and down. Are you more of a Thanksgiving girl or a Christmas girl? If you had to choose, Ellie Mac, no. I prefer Christmas. Thanksgiving. No, I like Christmas. I do, yeah. um, but I prefer Thanksgiving just because the meaning of it is still. Um, you know, still there is still warm and welcoming, and we Christmas I think is just yeah it diluted a little bit yeah. too much into you know this propaganda with presents and things like that, and the meaning of of Christmas has lost is is luster. <laughs> um, so. Behind the law, Justin Clark with you as we are every single weekday, eight o'clock p.m. Bud ninety four one. Allie Mack is here, Mick Dolan as well. A big problem in my neighborhood this time of year: they're stealing packages from the front doorstep. But right? you have a gated community. They still steal them. How is that possible? I don't know, mm -hmm. but they're doing it left oh and right. God. Any solutions for me? What sort of? Secu I, I hear you can like go on Amazon and buy like a little camera for like fifty bucks or something. What are, yeah, what are yeah, people doing? Those little doorknob now? things. Those door where you. Don't they have any those advice? cameras that are the doorbells yeah. that are all the ring? There you go. Ring. What is it? Ring. Ring. Yeah. And it's not even a service. You just pay for it one time, right? I think so. And, and it, it's and live. It shows and you who's at the door. Yeah. I kind of like that idea. Mm -hmm. Have you guys tried really? that yet? That's right, yeah. Have you tried it? Uh, no. no. I think it was on Shark Tank, wasn't it? The ring was on Shark Tank or something? Well, it's yeah. a great idea. And, I think and, it, if yeah. it's, and if it's inexpensive, then yeah. why not? How much is it, you think? A couple hundred bucks? Yeah, something like that. I thought it was like 50 bucks even. I did, too. I thought there was a cheap one. No? The ring system is like 200 something. It's worth it, though. You yeah, know, it's 100 bucks. You know, I imagine that these monthly service fee type security places are really about to go out of business, right? Because of all this new gadgetry that you don't have to pay for every month? Well, they say that they're easy to hack, though. 
Uh, that's oh, yeah. Oh, the ring? Uh, uh, I don't know. But this is the time of year. I mean, Amazon must be delivering packages, you know, left and right nonstop. Here's where neighbors come in this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nosy. The nosy neighbor actually yeah. comes in handy for exactly. once. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The same hey. neighbor that's going to tell you yeah. to cut your grass. Right. Is also going to say, hey, somebody <laughs> was messing with your package. The guy you hate January through November, all of a sudden's your best friend. Yeah. That's noticed, how it works. Yeah. Save that TV that was delivered. Making our laborious show prep today that Allie Mack and I were doing when you were three minutes late for today's show. <laughs> we, uh, we were talking about your mixed cheat sheet. Remember you brought the cheat sheet that one day? Right. Right. We've only seen it that one day. We were wondering what you do with your cheat sheet there. Well, the I, show notes. I got so much crap from the last time, I decided not to bring it again. <laughs> is no, that what it, it is? Was, yeah. it, was, it was good feedback that you got uh, from us. I thought that was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So cool. here's the deal, guys. <laughs> there, there was a, there was a show, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. <laughs> Mick comes in with like these two pages of notes, and we were like, Mick, we had no earthly idea you prepared like this. And Actually, he's like, I, I have seven pages. Seven at, pages? At the office, that's yeah. But man, that's from like seven years. <laughs> no, no, it's just important stuff, <laughs> and, and it goes down. There's the front page. Okay. And then there's a couple of uh, news pages where you know, stuff that goes on in the rock world. And then I've got uh, birthdays, rock birthdays. That's one page. Yeah. And what else? Uh... Other stuff. I got you. But you say you do this, the, the notes every day. You, like in well, the yeah. morning, you go through the whole, what you're going to talk about all day. The day before, update it for the, the next day. I like it. You should start but bringing But I don't that know the babe of the day each, each day. I have oh, to yeah. wait for that. I get <laughs> the babe of the day? The oh, yeah. Of the day. Should, yeah, he, he does a babe of the day. I remember, day. I remember the last show That's you... right. That's how we met. Set. As a matter of fact. <laughs> 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 oh, that's right. She could be on it. Meg. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. so every, kind. Every day, a different babe. <laughs> if you're in the market for a home... Or you think you might be paying too much interest rate on your current home, or better yet, maybe your house has equity now and you want to do some work, you want to put an addition on it, and you were thinking about refinancing to get some cash out to do the work on the home, don't go anywhere. We're going to bring in Dallas Lehman of You Have Mortgage. Let's see what the rates really are right now and what it really costs to get a new mortgage right on the other side of this break. Behind the law, Bud, 94.1. That would be the time to buy with rent so high. I mean, isn't that true, Dallas? They, they say that. Uh, yeah, ask. rates are rates are traditionally lower than they have been in quite some time. I mean, this would be the time to buy. Yeah. A lot of people are looking. Well, to buy well with rents rent. going up, his rents are just. It's like, oh yeah. How absolutely. can anybody? You, know, you might as well pay a mortgage payment. Yeah, you're absolutely. Any right. batteries? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, you guys ready? What? <clears throat> it just started going to go to red. You. We probably have time. Ready? Yeah. Welcome back to the show. It's Behind the Law. Bud, 94.1, Justin Clark, Allie Mack, and Mick Dolan join you as we do every single weeknight at 8 o'clock p.m. Thank you for spending some of your evening here with us. Download the Bud, 94.1 app. Go to the website. Listen to us all sorts of different ways. Don't forget the Mick, Old St. Mick. No, what is it? Old St. Mick Old Cruz. Saint. Are they calling you old or is it just sort of a play on words? It's, I hope they're not calling you old. old. Well, without the D at the old. end. No. Old. Old, old St. Okay. Mick. Old, old St. Mick. <laughs> the old St. Mick Cruz coming up on December 15th. Please. But I am old. And get your free tickets, I believe, right? Single yes. and available, uh, bachelor, <laughs> <laughs> ladies. Absolutely free. On the Bud 94.1 website. you have to register. you got to register. You can't just show up at the boat for the old St. Mick Cruz. I love it. And there's about 600 people already I registered. Love it. 600 already registered. Wow. And maybe it, half of those will show up. So <laughs> I can't it, wait. You know how it is. Okay. It's in I Port Canaveral, so you got to make a trip. But still, it's worth it. <laughs> Joining us now, a very good friend, an excellent mortgage broker out there. He is the owner of You Have Mortgage. His name, Dallas Lehman. Dallas, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Thank you very much, sir. It's great to be here. <laughs> Thanks good for to see you. Thank you. All right. Let, let's say I'm in the market for a mortgage now, first of all, and I wanted to get a quote from you. What's the best way to reach out? Well, the best way, you can always reach me directly at 407-383-8913, <coughs> excuse me, or dlayman at youhavemortgage.com. All right, so let's get right to it. Let's get right to the tough stuff, because this is a question you get all the time, I'm sure. You know, I've been renting for a while. I'm worried. Is there going to be another crash? Is now a good time to purchase a home? Now is a great time to purchase a home. Obviously, the rates are lower than they have been in years. 
The first question I always get asked is, what is the rate? What is the rate I can get? What's the best rate that you can get for me today? And of course, that question is answered by a range. Um, it really depends on the basic you know, information that I collect when I pre-approve people. And that would be your credit, your income, your assets, and your reserves. And once I, I have that information, I discuss it with you, then we can look at the rate. Now, rates, you know, again, rates can be anything for anybody. I always tell people, I'm never going to turn you down for a loan. We may be able to get a loan today. We may be able to get a loan in six months, or we may have to do, we may have to do some work and do it maybe over a year's time. But everybody is always encouraged to never assume that you can't get a loan. Hmm. Now, back to what I was saying about rates, if you want to know about rates, conforming rates are what everybody is you know, usually asking about. I would say in today's market right now, and they're subject to change all the time, you know that every day, but I would say between 4.875 and 5.25 are a good, strong, conventional rate for right now. So to answer your question to purchase, absolutely a great time to purchase. That's up, though, a little bit, right? <clears throat> it has ticked up a little yeah. bit. You're right. It has the ticked Fed up a little bit. The Fed raises rates. What the hell is that? I mean. <laughs> You're right. The Fed, you know, and if, if I knew what the Fed could do, and we all do, we would be billionaires. We would. But, <laughs> I watched <laughs> all of us, <laughs> even me. <laughs> I watched the Fed, you know, about every other day. But if we listen to what the Fed said, and what the, the last time they spoke, they said that they're looking to hold down rates now for this quarter, which ends in December. And if we're lucky, that's going to carry over into January and February. Is there any sort of trick? Let's say I'm thinking about purchasing a home, and you know, I don't know if I want to buy a two hundred thousand dollar house or a three hundred thousand dollar house, four hundred thousand dollar house. Even is there any sort of trick in your head that you can kind of say, for every hundred thousand, your payment should be five hundred a month or six hundred a month? Is there is there any sort of guide there? I know it's not exact science, but is there anything I can sort of use in my head to figure out how much I can I can actually afford? That's a good question, but to, to be accurate, and I like to be very accurate and detailed with all of my customers and clients. Really, I go back to what I said with the income, the assets, the reserves, and the employment. Those things are really going to determine. It's not really so many thousands per, per interest rate. It, what's really going to qualify you is your income, your assets, and those, those factors. Those are the most important to you. Um, there, there really is no secret, unfortunately, like that. That's, that criteria is always your best friend that's going to get you the best loan. So there's no family Uncle Joe rate, uh, <laughs> the, good, the good stuff. Well, the good news is, it, quite honestly, I mean, I've, you know, being the owner and working with the company, I look to help people in every way possible to make the deal work. Um, the Uncle Joe, the favored loans, um, if there's room to help, we always look to help. There are ways to do that. Um, I'm also a licensed real estate agent, so being on that side of the equation, I've, I sometimes help other realtors or newer realtors that are newer to the industry and the market to, to look for ways to include seller cost contribution or other ways to save them money. So I've heard that they, you know, back in the day, 2006, it was just a pen and a pulse. You can get a mortgage. That's, but that now, was true. <laughs> I might have a couple little kinks in the armor, so to speak, on the credit report. I've heard it's just impossible to get a mortgage. So I've just been renting because I, I don't even want to deal with it. I know if I have a little bit wrong, there's no way I'm going to qualify. Is it loosening up a little bit again? That's an outstanding point, Justin. And, and to be honest with you, um, what you're referring to is back in the day, uh, they were stated income loans, uh, no income, no asset verification loans, very little documentation. Now, several years ago with the SAFE Act and everything that you know transpired, a lot of that changed. They went back to almost strict conventional, FHA, VA, you know, all the conforming loans that are out there. However, as I said, and, and to your point, the pendulum has shifted, and we are seeing more of those programs return in a much, a little bit tighter array. For example, there are stated programs. And the reason I don't like to discourage anybody for precluding themselves from a loan, thinking like we've said, oh, I'll never get a loan, I've had a bankruptcy, I've had a foreclosure, I've had a difficult situation. Those loans are coming back. And what we like to offer is, certainly we can offer the conforming loans to everybody. We can offer the FHA loans to everybody. We can offer the VA loans to everybody. But there are some what we call non-conforming or non-QM loans that we now offer that, that loosen those standards a little bit for people. Um, and what I mean by that is if you just miss conforming guidelines, mm -hmm. You know, you're not that person that has the 750 middle credit score. You've had a job for less than two years. You have a little ding here, you have a little ding there. 
Um, some of those programs are being reintroduced with maybe a little stronger guideline than oversight. But to answer your question, there are a lot of programs out there now that are helpful to a foreclosure person yeah. or a bankrupt person or somebody looking at them. You that think way. we're going to swing, the pendulum's going to swing back to the bad old days uh, where everything just went? Well, you know, that, that, that's, that's, that's an excellent question. And, you know, we can never predict, but I would like to think that Wall Street learned its lesson. Yeah, I'd like to think we'd all like to think <laughs> that. I, I said yeah. I'd like to think, Nick. Okay. Nick you're, you're right. Um, and God, I'm an optimist, too. And, and <laughs> gee, I know they're going to police themselves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. So we'll, we'll see. I, I like to think that we're, we've uh, learned from that mistake. When I say we, it's not really we. I'll say the banks have learned from that on Wall Street. Um, and some of the players on that side of the of could the there be uh, could there ever be another Bernie Madoff? Do you think where he just uh, I don't know how he did it, but Boy, that's you know boy, I, that's scared. stressful right there. Mm-hmm. Stealing billions of dollars can get Man. really stressful. God, you know what I mean? <laughs> I I you know that's just I, I watched that movie by the way. It was a great movie, and yeah I jeez uh, you know just he, he was kind of a he was an unusual case. He I really would hope. Was. I mean my God, this guy was like. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I don't, I don't know. You know, just that mindset. I, I don't understand it. I, I sure hope not. You wonder, how we, uh, wonder how he would have done on Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> probably pretty well. Hey, I got a good deal. Yeah, probably pretty well. You're listening to Behind the Law, Bud 94.1, Justin Clark, Allie Mack, McDolan, joining you today with a very special guest, Dallas Lehman of You Have Mortgage. If you're in the market for a new home, or if you want to do a rehab on your existing home or add to your new to an existing home or even refinance out of a high rate look now is a good time we're not in the days where you know, the guy playing pluto down at disney was buying multiple million dollar houses like we were in 2006 we're not doing that but i can assure you as someone who's been in this world every single day the last 14 years the the lending guidelines have absolutely loosened up so you've been hearing for the last, what, five or six years, oh, you can't get a mortgage because you have to be perfect now. Mm-hmm. They've loosened up. They, they make money lending money. I mean, that, that's sure. just how the world works, you know. They are lending money again. I don't think we're going back to the pulse and a pen day, but it's certainly loosened up. There's no doubt about it. And, and Dallas, I think even Mick asked a little bit earlier, oh, it looks like the rates have ticked up a little bit. And I'm not trying to age you, Dallas, but I know you remember the days of uh, Jimmy Carter and, and what the interest I know you do, too, Mick. 13% what, or I mean, something like that? What were the interest that? rates for homes back in the Jimmy Carter days? I've heard upwards of 18%. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's, another, ex- that's another excellent point. I'll, I'll use an example. I, I bought my first house in 1991. Um, I was a young executive. I had, uh, I think, about a 725 middle score. I had reserves. I had everything. I was the perfect Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guideline picture for a loan. And back during the rates with that, I was thrilled with 20% down to get 9.125. I was thrilled. You were were single digits. I was was absolutely thrilled. And then two or three years later, I thought that I really did well when I refinanced and got down to 7 and 8. I thought, it's never going to get any better than this. So when people hear, you know, today, when people hear about the conforming rates, when you hear that, you know, the rates are anywhere right now between 4.875 and five and a quarter or 5.75, I've got to tell you, those rates are low. Mm -hmm. And and even as you mentioned, Justin, not too, too long ago, I mean, a a good prevailing rate was anywhere from uh, 6% to six and a quarter. That was a strong rate. So the rates today, and, and as Mick talked about a little earlier, the rates today, and even as we go into the first quarter of next year, if we can believe the Fed, and we'll take that with a grain of salt, but I, I like to use it as a strong bench, uh, benchmark, I think we're going to enjoy those, those lower rates for a while now. Do the VA loans um, fluctuate also if you have a VA? Yes, the rates are, are also different there. They're, they're, they're a little different on the but they'll – they fall generally in line with the conforming mm-hmm. rates. And I have a question as far as, like, if you have a mortgage, mm-hmm. um, and I've seen this happen to our house a couple times already in the seven years I've been there, where the bank sells the mortgage to another lender, mm-hmm. and uh, my rate stays the same, but what I've noticed is my principal is a little different. I would, I would talk to that lender because what they're doing is your, your mortgage company is selling that loan the, mm-hmm. to the servicing rights of that loan. And that's how banks make money. Um, they bundle, and this is where this, this fiasco started years ago with the, the bad loans being bundled with the good loans. 
But the bottom line is um, all that's happening is your bank has sold that servicing rights to another lender. Now, there shouldn't be, to my to my best knowledge, there shouldn't have been an adjustment to the principal mm -hmm. or anything else. So usually what we call this is a hello and goodbye letter, and most people don't even see it. I mean, some people throw it out with their mail because they're not expecting it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm looking for my Bank of America or my, my you know, and then suddenly, Ali, you get a different one, and the man says, oh, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's an offer. But the bottom line is they're saying, you know, we're your new lender. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to do this. But just uh, my best advice to you is there really shouldn't have been any changes to your to your payment and anything else. Uh, they just sold the servicing rights. I'm thinking about buying a new home, and I already have my checking account with Wells Fargo. Ooh. I already have my <laughs> savings account at SunTrust. I just want to keep Wells everything Fargo. there. I'm just going to borrow the money from Wells Fargo because I've been with them for 25 years. Why is that maybe not the best idea in the world? Let's ask Dallas Lehman. If you have mortgage that question after this short time out on Bud 941. Can you did, push that to him a little bit more? Didn't Thank Wells Fargo you. just have another problem? Yeah, they did. They've got yeah, thanks. They yeah, they've a got a plethora of them. <laughs> <laughs> You're not well, with Wells Fargo, I guess. No, I'm not. No, no. I am, we are. He's I am. Been, He's been all right. No, so the most recent issue with Wells Fargo is this. They had a glitch in their system during the foreclosure cri crisis and accidentally foreclosed on like 600 homeowners oh, yeah. mm -hmm. because they should have gotten yeah. a loan modification, but they didn't. And, you know, these people lost their houses, and they sent them checks for like 25 grand, but no one could figure out where they came up with 25 grand. I oh, mean, they got checks? Yeah. Oh, well, that's kind of better. Of. You know, at least they didn't yeah. get completely <laughs> screwed. Yeah, we lawyers jump on those situations. Uh, They're like, oh, do. the check, it doesn't look like enough. <laughs> that's not enough. A couple there more you zeros. Go. All right, you ready to go? <laughs> mm -hmm. Welcome back to the show. It's Behind the Law on Bud 94.1. Another half hour. Thank you for spending some of your evenings here with us every single night at 8 p.m. on our favorite radio station. Do not forget to watch the television program this Sunday and every Sunday, 10 a.m. on TV 27, if you don't mind. Download that Bud 94.1 app, because even if you're in your car, you can pick up the rock music all day long, behind the law in the evenings. Mick Dolan all day, the face of the station, of Boy, course. Boy, there's a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> She's six hours of Mick Dolan yeah, every know, day. Right? Wow. <laughs> Makes a body good. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Work it out, baby. Work Allie out. Mack is here. How are you, Allie Mack? I'm doing good, thank you, on this cold, cold day. It's really not that cold. I'm it wearing like boots. I'm wearing my... It degrees outside. Um, I mean, I just don't is... find this cold. 27 you... today in Philadelphia. My yeah. sister said it snowed. Oh. But this is a good time of year to get sick because one day it's 85, the next day it's 60, mm -hmm. and I can't even keep up, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I walk out, I'm like, I hope it's not super cold it's out there. supposed to warm up for the weekend. Is that right? Oh, yeah. great. No, I like it when it's cold for the holidays because you feel the holidays. But, yeah, when it's mm -hmm. when it's warm, you're wearing tank tops, you just you don't feel the holidays. Exactly. So That's why we're, we're not good on spirit here in Florida. I know. <laughs> we need, we need more cold weather. Yeah. The beautiful Brianna is here as well. If you don't mind, follow us at Behind the Law Radio on Instagram and Facebook. You can actually ask us any question right there as well. And Brianna will read them on the air and we'll answer them to the best of our ability, at least. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't promise any solid, accurate answers, but we'll do the best we can. Or they can call in as well. Or you can feel free to call in. 321 282 1055. Today we're talking about mortgages. Is it time to buy? Is it time to sell? Should I refinance? Is it time? to do a little rehab work on my house, and do I have enough equity to really suck some cash out of it via a refinance? So we brought in our good friend and the owner of You Have Mortgage. His name is Dallas Lehman. Dallas, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you very much. Great right. to be here. If I have some questions about mortgages, I'm, should I, am I, I'm already going through someone else, but I want to see if I can get a better rate through you, or I just have some questions. You seem trustworthy. If I call you, are you going to charge me to talk to me and, and sort of tell me what my options are? <laughs> Not one cent. Um, I pre-approve people. Uh, there is absolutely no charge whatsoever. There's no upfront fee. Um, I'm always happy to speak with people. One of the nice things about working with somebody like myself is the bottom line, we are not a bank. Um, when you call a bank, you usually get a 1-800 number. Um, their hours are generally, if you're lucky, 9 to 5, uh, certainly not on the weekends. Um, I hold office hours you know, here on the weekends. Um, I'm reachable in the evenings. 
the thing about working with somebody like us is we tailor the loan and the experience based on, on your schedule. We understand, you know, a lot of people work, you know, who doesn't start their day at maybe eight or nine in the morning mm-hmm. at work and, you know, they, they might stay till six or seven. So if they can meet, I often meet people here at the office, it could be six thirty, seven thirty, or on a Saturday. So, yeah. That's I think one of the misconceptions is this. You you already bank with Wells Fargo. You know, you have your relationship there. If you want to call it a relationship anymore, I mean, mm-hmm. this is not Main Street Savings and Trust, you no. know, from the old They're days. They're holding your money. So. These people <laughs> don't know them. you. They don't care about you. But you think, look, my money is already there. I just want to go through them. I'll just borrow Wells Fargo money. Look, Dallas, is this really Wells Fargo money? Or is this they just doing the same thing you're doing? with much worse customer service. Uh, there, that's, that's, that's pretty factual and pretty accurate. Um, the bottom line is, you know, if you're going to go to a brick-and-mortar institution like a bank, you know, they, they have their funds. They're, they're good to go. And those funds come from your deposits. They come from the interest rates and all the things that they earn from the fees and everything else. Um, banking, Wells Fargo, you know, pick any bank. The bottom line is, if you come to somebody like me, I'm going to tailor, you know, my best abilities, and I'm not restricted to one loan program, which, generally speaking, let's stay on the subject of Wells Fargo. Um, Wells Happy Fa- to. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> and, yeah, I, and the bottom line is, Wells Fargo is going to do what we in the business have always referred to as cookie-cutter loans. And what that means is they are going to stick to, because they have to, they, they must, stick to the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines. And in doing so, if anybody falls out of those guidelines, and, you know, the basic guidelines just as an, as an average, do you have that 750 middle score? Have you been at your job for a minimum of two years? Do you have enough reserves in the bank at the time of closing to cover everything? Do you have the 20% down payment? Do you have all those guidelines? And to be honest, Wells Fargo and the banks, if you don't have that, What's going to happen is you're not going to get a loan officer that's going to sit there with you and say, well, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, unfortunately, you don't qualify. Um, Usually what happens is you're going to get a declination or what's known as an adverse action letter, probably anywhere from a week to three weeks after the fact that you didn't approve. Now, why didn't you get approved? The guidelines, the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines that I've been speaking to just a second ago, um, with if you fall out of those guidelines you're just not going to be able to get a loan with that bank. Somebody like like myself, we have other lenders that have programs that, that will help people with that, that fallout, or, or if, if they just miss. And what I wanted to stress was, you know, again, back to Wells Fargo and, and the banks out there, the bricks and mortars. Um, the bottom line is, if you go and you do a little bit of research, you're going to find, and it varies, it varies from month to month, but most of America does not fit that conforming guideline standard. You're going to find that on average, only 11 to 14 percent of Americans, the national, you know, the, the total nation, qualify under the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines. What? So what does that mean? What, yeah. that? what does that mean? That Tell means me most people are going to miss that conforming standard, and they're going to have to find somebody to help them with that line. <clears throat> Let me try to sum it up wow. for you, Mick. Here's how it works. You call a Wells Fargo, whatever, right? They have, like, a checklist. Okay, yes, 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 fine, we can do your loan. One thing, one box not checked, sorry, we can't, we, we can't help you, right? You call someone like Dallas, he's going to bust his ass to make sure you do qualify and find a program that you do qualify for, even if you're a little bit outside of the box, right? I Absolutely. mean, essentially, that's what you do. Well said. You spend most of your day trying to help people qualify for loans as opposed to trying to help people not qualify for loans well like said. the big box stores exactly. do. Exactly. Allie Mack, let me ask you this question. It's behind the law, by the way. We're talking all things mortgages today. My name is Justin Clark. Allie Mack, let me ask you this. What is the most scary thing for you if you were to be going to get a mortgage right now Mm -hmm. what would be the most scary part of it for you well for me it would be not knowing if i qualify because i have a bankruptcy in my in my history Mm -hmm. so that would be the scariest thing for me dallas to to think that shouldn't scare you no way well i thought 15 years you can't get a mortgage if you file bankruptcy let's go back to wells fargo but there there are there are many many guidelines fannie mae freddie mac now depending on the loan and and by the way don't be scared of that Mm -hmm. um you know depending on the loan program even if it is conforming let's Mm -hmm. just say it is a fannie mae freddie mac guideline you know there are or an fha or a va or whatever the case may be that bankruptcy 
you know, you can get another loan. Now, we have what are called seasoning periods based on the loan program. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sticking to conforming right now to best answer your question from a conforming brick-and-mortar answer. Um, the bottom line is they may say, well, it's going to be two years from discharge based on one program. It's going to be three years from discharge. Was it a Chapter 7 or was it a Chapter 13? Well, then it may be four years. You know, I had a realtor call me several months ago, and she was standing there with another realtor, and the person said, in, in front of her, she said, well, you, there's no way you can, you can get that because you've had a bankruptcy. There are no loan programs out there. And I, I talked to the, to the realtor later, and I said, I've got to tell you something. I said, I, I want to educate you right now. There are programs out there, and we offer these programs, by the way, but I, I want people to understand this very clearly when I talk about it. There are there are One day out of bankruptcy, one day out of foreclosure, you can get a loan. Now, now I just don't want everybody to say, oh, my goodness, that's I'm me. Yeah, yeah, that's me. I, I can do that. Remember, these are a little stricter standards. I mean, there are, you know, you have to meet certain points to get these loans. Are the rates going to be a little higher? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because lenders measure risk through the interest rate. They're always concerned with the, the default factor. So if the rate, you know, the rate's a little high, that's their, the way they mitigate risk. But what I would tell you to, to best answer your question, Allie Meg, is do not worry about the bankruptcy. Um, if there's any way that we can do it conforming for that person, that's always the first option. We look at getting them a good conforming loan. If not, then we work out a plan. We say, okay, well, then this may be a non-QM, non-conforming option we can look at. And do that. So there, there are many forgiving programs for bankruptcy and foreclosure. So that's an excellent question. I certainly hope anybody does not get scared if they do have a bankruptcy or even a foreclosure because those all can be addressed. So generally your bank mm. offers just their products. That's, yes. And you as a broker can shop around. So You're, there's the difference. I mean, well, why would you go to a bank? First of all, I, yeah. well, that'd be the last place I'd go for a loan, but well to a said. broker. Well said. You know. Yep. Absolutely. So, Dallas, let's be honest here, too. We can we can talk freely, right? Absolutely. So, you know how sometimes car salesmen get a bad rap? They're like, oh, crap. Here I, you're yeah. buying a, I hate going to buy a car because i got to deal with a slimy old car guy, right? And not everyone's like that. I'm, I'm generalizing, of course. I have About a lot 95%. Of, yeah. I, have a, I, have a, <laughs> I have a lot of car guys who are friends of mine who have been on the show before, so I'm generalizing. But people do have that mentality. I think that maybe in the past, mortgage brokers have also been sometimes a little bit slimy what should, what are things that i should look for where i know my mortgage broker is kind of up and up you know what i mean that's a very good question uh, and you know back historically speaking and what you're talking about is before the crash and before the um they started to require a much stringent um, testing system for licensure to get a mortgage <laughs> license um the bottom line is a lot of people never should have been in the industry um, they were working, you know, as a correspondent lender under another person's license. They had no qualifications, nor did they need any at that time. Uh, now, for in, in this day and age, the SAFE Act has come along, and all these laws have been implemented for licensure, and you are really put through a full examination of your ability to conduct loans. So y you're right. There were some people that never, ever should have been doing loans out there, but uh, a lot of changes have been made through the NMLS system, the way that they screen, the way that, the, I mean, the testing, <laughs> the testing to become licensed is not easy. Uh, you know, you know, there's a So hopefully we've weeded out all the yeah, bad Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a good way to put it. I think some yeah. of the bad ones have been weeded out, wet out. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, we Whatever have a question right from one of our listeners. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Sorry. Let's take that right on the other side of this break, can we? Because I also want to ask we another know. question to Dallas. I want to ask you. I was getting a, a mortgage, and they said something about they wanted to lock my rate. What does that mean? What is this rate lock concept you're talking about? Let's take the audience questions and the question about rate lock right on the other side of this break. we got one segment ahead of Behind the Law on Bud 941. A lovely lady by the name of Vivian has a question. Oh, oh she does. <laughs> I might know her. <laughs> might be a good chance. I think you do. you <laughs> might you might know her as well. I'm yeah. Fan of the show and knows her real estate. <laughs> Can you tilt that this way just a tiny bit, the top part? Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Good. Uh, would you say she had a good teacher? 
Ah, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, All right. This is it. This is the last segment? Yeah. I oh, always try to check oh. now. Isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Is this yeah. the last? Okay. Yeah. yeah. One final segment ahead. Thanks for spending your night here with us. It's Behind the Law, Bud 94.1. My name is Justin Clark. I've got Ali Mack to my left, and connected at the elbow to her left is Orlando <laughs> Radio really? Legend Mick Dolan. Follow us at Behind the Law Radio. You can watch the show live right there, or tune in and watch the show on television this Sunday and every Sunday TV 27. Join us for the old St. Mick Cruz. Mick. Mm-hmm. Mick, Mick That's what Mick, I said, Mick. right? Yeah. Old St. Old old, St. Mick Old without Cruz. the D. Go to the Bud 94.1 website, register right there. 600 thirsty people have already signed Boy, up. Really? And <laughs> hungry. <laughs> and they all have this. wooden legs. <laughs> they all have wooden legs. So they'll be drinking <laughs> look, heavily. Look, ladies and gentlemen, even if you don't. And named f- Captain. <laughs> even if you don't want to get out that Saturday, which, first of all, is going to be a great event. Mick's been in It'll radio be for 45 years. This is his first ever cruise that they named after him. We got to show up. Yeah, we got to really. show up in force. Let, let's all get out there. I need all, all the help I can get. Let's all get out there. I can't. No, they told wait. me. They told me they're going to put nets up outside <laughs> the ship. So, <laughs> That's probably just in a, case somebody falls. That's probably a terrific plan. <laughs> yeah, really. That's what your insurance carrier's making them do. Once they know it's our audience, <laughs> the insurance company's like, you better get some nets well, on that boat. They're case. preparing. They're preparing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Three two one two eight two one zero five five. Pleasured to be joined by Dallas Lehman. You have mortgage phone number. If you have any questions about your mortgage, you need to buy a house, need to refinance. Dallas four zero seven three eight three eight nine one three. Allie Mack, the social media whiz. What's the question? The question is, how long does it take for a loan to be completed from the time you sign when you fill out the application? Okay. What I tell everybody is, and generally speaking, that's 30 days, and realtors like to write contracts within 30 days. Um, when a realtor writes a contract, we like to say honor before 30 days to close, mm-hmm. sometimes 45 days. But when I sit down with somebody, and by the way, I mean, we've closed loans here it, it, you know, within two weeks. I mean, it, it, can, it can go just wow. as fast. But what I want to tell people is when I sit down with somebody, I always let them know. I tell them immediately, you are going to be an active participant in this process. Mm -hmm. In other words, I have three processors that I work with, and they all do a wonderful job. After I sit down with you and I get as much information as I need, and before I select select a lender for you, um, we get that information to the processors and they do it. Now, what is the timing? What what sticks you to that 30 days, so to speak, or to answer that question best? we ask you for a lot of information. It's, it's not a lot. It's not tough to get. Basic things, pay stubs, bank statements, things of that nature. Some people are very organized, and they can get you that information very quickly. Mm-hmm. So the faster they And then they there's Dolan, <laughs> <laughs> who's not so organized. Well, uh, so I'm a 45-day <laughs> guy, probably. Yeah, we, we will help everybody, and we're very good at, you know, from start to finish with helping people to get their documents in on time. And then, of course, you know, we have to pull credit. We have to get an appraiser. We have to do this. So you have to allow for all the components of the loan. So the best answer to that question, I like to say 30 days, but we can certainly do it in two weeks if, if that buyer, borrower, refinancer, that person is an active and willing participant in helping us to get whatever we need to get the loan done. What is a rate lock? A rate lock is, you know, when you start, before you submit your loan, you know, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to tell you, you know, well, looking at what I've seen so far, I think your range right now is this. But subject to me pulling your credit, you know, pre-qualifying your income, doing all those things, uh, we're going to talk about a range. Now, once your loan is submitted, we have the ability. I can lock your rate for you, or we can talk about it. Now, most people are very busy throughout the day, so I like to tell people, Rates fluctuate, rates change daily, hourly. They can change dramatically or they can stay the same. The benefit is there's usually three types of rate locks. There's 15-day rate locks, there's 30-day rate locks, and there's 45-day. And there, there's some that extend that. But to answer your question, uh, Justin, your loan is floating until we lock that rate. So I usually do that with the lender. Um, I give the person the range to say, you know, this is where we're going to be. But please know that it can change, but we're going to be in this range. Would you like me to, to lock your loan for you when the time comes? 
based on what I see in the market conditions and speaking with the lenders and my processors? Or, you know, do we want to try to do it together? And I've got to be honest with you. It's better, I feel, in most cases that we have the discussion up front. And I like to, to lock that loan. Timing is crucial. If, for example, we get closer to the, to, the, to the closing of the loan and we have a 15-day period, generally speaking, 15-day rates are lower than a 30-day lock rate. So some people might say, you know something? I hear you're saying this rate today is 5 and an eighth, or it's 5.375, or whatever that rate may be. And I say, I want to lock that loan. Well, remember, we have to get everything in, but then if, when I talk to you, when you have everything submitted to the lender, our lender of our choice, and I'll say, here's the rate. Do you want to lock it at that? Some people like that. They say, yeah, I want to lock that for 30 days. Wait till the last minute if you can. I mean, well, I know that's not good for you, but it's kind of like voting. <laughs> <laughs> you never want to vote too early because something might happen. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. It's a good point. So a uh, rate lock, I, I think, do you understand? You, you know what that means? I do, kind but of with no? that said, the rate lock, you could also, the rates could also go down. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the that's the thing that people some people like to hedge some people mm -hmm. like to think they feel the rate or the the market may adjust and it might go down there's people's mindsets are all different in mm -hmm. what they expect what their expectation is um, but once it's locked it's locked so you, you can't go mm -hmm. down right once it's Isn't locked there's some locked. somebody saying that they can that it'll never go up but if it goes down and we give you that too is that I mean, I, you, you, you can't have it both ways. I, I mean, might have heard that on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Wikipedia? Yeah. Everything's true the on internet. Facebook and Wikipedia. And Wikipedia. <clears throat> Absolutely. All right. So what are you seeing with the future of rates, Dallas? I know you're no, uh, you don't have a magic wand. You're not a prognosticator. But where do you see the rates going over the next, say, six months to a year? Excellent question. Um, I go by a lot of indicators. When I get up every morning, the first thing I do is I, I read some of the things that I that I pay for that, uh, and I, you know, I pay attention to all the leading indicators. I look at the stock market, I look at the Fed, I look at all the different things first thing in the morning. And one of those is the GDP, which I think was 4.1 or 4.7 not long ago. I look at uh, all those economic factors. And what I personally feel, my personal opinion is, this economy is so robust and has been for the last two years. Um, I think going into these next two years, the economy is going to continue to be robust. So where do I see interest rates in that robust economy? There's a balancing act here. It's inversely proportional in many ways. When the economy is good, when the economy is strong, lenders, the people that determine these things say, well, if the, the economy is strong, people can afford a higher rate. Mm -hmm. When things are bad, when things are bad like before these last two years, you know, we were at zero percent. I mean, it was, there was people who it was hard to get a loan. So the bottom line is, where do I see it with the next six months, you know, next six months mm -hmm. or a year? I think the administration is going to work with the economy. Like I said, what I see going into the first quarter of next year with January and February, I think rates are going to be somewhere right where they are right now. I don't see any dramatic increases. What I've read, what I read in the mornings and, and before I go to bed at night, they're calling for potentially, and this changes weekly, but they're calling for potentially, the Fed is calling for maybe, maybe, two or three increases past February into the next year. Right. Now, now, what are we talking about increases? Those increases could be an eighth of a point, which is 0.125. Those increases could be a full point. Those increases, but remember, and Ali, you talked about this a second ago. Remember, the Fed doesn't always just go up. They also lower that rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those movements they're talking about going into the next six months or a year, the bottom line is some of those movements could be a spike a little bit upward, or they could be down a little bit. But to answer your question, Justin, I think we're in a, in a very good place going into the next six months and a year. For gotcha. You're listening to Behind the Law, Bud 94.1, Justin Clark here. We're talking to Dallas Lehman. He's the owner of You Have Mortgage. Phone number, Dallas. 407-383-8913. Rent versus buy. A lot of people are having that debate right now in their heads because I think we all know, at least if you listen to this program, the rental market is strong. I mean, it is very expensive yeah. to strong, rent. Strong for the landlord. Strong for the landlord. It is <laughs> tough to rent. Take me through this scenario, Dallas. Let, let's say that we're looking at the same exact house right now down the street here in Maitland. It's worth $300,000, and it's on the market for $300,000. Would I be able to rent that house or purchase the house? Would my payment be less to pay the mortgage 
or to pay your rent, do you think, as we sit here today? Good question. Um, the, the rental agency is going to qualify you one way, and, of course, the, the mortgage uh, company is going to qualify you another. What I would say is your best, your best option, and, and I'll talk about renting in a minute, but your best option is if you can put a certain amount of money down, your lower payment and your best option is going to be to buy that $300,000 house. You have a little bit of control on what your payment's going to be. You're going to control what your down payment is going to be. The more you put down, the less your payment's going to be. The better your credit score, the less your payment's going to be. When you go to a, to a company to, to rent, they're going to say, this is what it is. You're going to pay this, and that, that's what it's going to be. There's no negotiation. There's no yeah. negotiation. Well, there's also the first-time home buyers in the state of Florida, and also don't they have a program for the county? That also helps with the assistance of the down payment. There are that? a myriad of programs, mm -hmm. and I talk to be you know a lot, of, a lot of my. That's why I'm a little bit hoarse, and I, I apologize. It's end of month, and my, I've lost my voice a little bit because that's I talk with the with these people all day long. But the the bottom line is, um, there's a ton of programs out there for first time home buyers and everything else. Um, so. When I talk to an underwriter, the first thing I analyze, you know, I look at the big picture. I look at the, the four things we've talked about today. And then in my, in my brain, I'm directed to, is that a first-time home buyer? Can they benefit by that? Or would they go better with a conventional conforming loan? Or is it this? So in your, in your daily mind, you have a matrix of where you want to go. And the nice thing is, you know, we're approved with several and, you know, good wholesale strong lenders. Um, it's nice to be able to pick up the phone and talk to an underwriter and say, you know what, I have this, but I see they're right at this point with this. Can they still qualify for that, that first-time home buyer program? Another nice thing is with our lenders, um, they, are, they come up with new programs all the time. So what they will do is they will try to mirror, sometimes they will mirror an existing program, like a first-time home buyer program, and change it even a little more in the favor of, of the borrower. Lovely information from Dallas Lehman. If you have mortgage, if you're buying a house, want to refi to do some repairs, add an addition onto your home, we recommend you have mortgage. Reach out to Dallas at this phone number. 407-383-8913. Good job today, brother. Thank you Thank for being you, here. Great it's being been here, a long Justin. time coming. We tried to get you on the show for a little bit. I know you're a busy guy. Enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Allie Appreciate Mack. It. Fantastic job today. Thank you, thank you. Are you going riding horses after this? I mean, those yes, are some I'm pretty a, big boots. I'm an equestrian today. Sophia so yeah, will, will love you today for wearing those big boots. <laughs> for oh, the, is that what they're for? <laughs> okay, all right. For, for, the, for the beautiful Brianna, my name is Justin Clark. And Mick Dolan, I don't know much, but I do know one little tiny thing. What's that? I will see you right back here tomorrow night on Bud 94. One. That's a wrap. Thanks, everybody. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, really. <laughs>